guys welcome back to another episode of pocket m's and as of lately i've been on a pretty big heater i've been posting a ton of crazy winning sessions and as much as i would like to continue posting crazy winning sessions the reality of poker is that sometimes you win and sometimes you just can't win a pot so today i'm going to be showing you a session where i played absolutely terrible so feel free to roast me in the comments. And before we get into this terrible session of mine, uh, let's take a look at what I did earlier today on Lunar New Year. Today is Lunar New Year and we're volunteering at Shilai Temple in Hacienda Heights, California. We're here to perform a lion dance for my dad's Kung Fu class. They need extra help this year to do the big golden dragon because this is the year of the dragon. This is also our first time doing the performance, so we're kind of nervous. But before the performance starts, we check out the cool activities at the temple, including paying respects with some incense, tossing a coin with a ribbon onto the ribbon tree for good fortune. Alright, let's do it. And then it's time for the performance to begin. Check out my dad as the head of the dragon and me and Mona at the tail. All right, now that we gave back to the community, hopefully the community can give back to us at the poker table. Our very first hand dealt, we pick up eight, seven of clubs in early gun one. We open to $20 and we take down the blinds. Nice, We're one for one for the day. Today feels like a good start to Chinese New Year. Very next deal, we pick up king queen offsuit in the big blind. The cutoff limps, the small blind checks, and I raise it up to $25. We're getting very active early on in the session. These guys aren't going to give me another free pot though, because they both make the call. Three ways to the flop comes queen 10 7 rainbow. We flop top pair with a good kicker. The small blind checks, and I see bet $25 with my top pair, and they both make the call once again. Still three ways. The turn is the eight of diamonds, completing a ton of two pair combos like 10 8, 7 8, or even queen 8, and straight draws like jack 9 and 6 9. It also brings in a backdoor diamond draw, so it's a pretty bad turn card overall. So when the small blind checks, I choose to exercise some pot control and check. The cutoff also checks. So off to a free river comes the six of hearts, putting a four liner out to the straight. Okay, if the turn was bad, the river is even worse. And even worse than that, the small blind now grabs some chips and leads out for $75 pretty quickly. Don't know if I believe him, he might just be trying to steal the pot because everyone checked the turn. Don't really know how this guy plays because this is my second hand at the table. But for $75, I think that's a fair price. So I call and the cutoff folds. The small blind shows Jack-9 offsuit for the turn straight. <sighs> Why did I call the river? I knew I was beat on the turn. My curiosity definitely got the better of me and our stack takes a hit to $350. Two hands later, we pick up ace nine offsuit on the button. The hijack opens to $15, the cutoff calls, and I make the call and so does the big one. Four ways, the flop comes 10, eight, seven, all clubs. We have draws for days with the ace high flush draw and the open-ended straight draw. The cutoff, the same player who just beat us with jack nine, bets out for $35. I call, hoping to bink any club, six or jack, and most importantly, to get my revenge. Revenge is very important in this game. Everyone else folds and it's heads up to the turn, which is the two of spades, total brick. Cutoff doesn't slow down and he fires for a second barrel, this time for $45. I still have a ton of outs, so I'm not going anywhere. I call again, praying for a club, and the river is black, but it's the 10 of spades pairing the top card. Well, that sucks. I missed everything, and the cutoff seems to have everything. Because he fires a third barrel for $100. With just ace high, I'm forced to fold, and we're unable to get a revenge on this guy. No, God! No, God, please, no, 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 no! Back dwindles down to $280. Uh-oh. After this hand, we add on another $200 for some extra firepower. This hand isn't recorded because it's a limp pot, and I didn't think anything interesting was going to happen. But, uh, yeah. So, we have 6-4 offsuit in the big line. There's two limps, and we go four ways to a flop of ace-five-deuce-rainbow. We have a gutter to the nuts, and when it checks to the button, he bets out for $15. With a draw to the nuts, I make the call, and now it's heads up. The turn is the six of clubs, giving a second pair now. I check, and now our opponent 
buyer's large for $60. That's a very large bet over the pot, in fact. And I am a bit confused about what he has. It's a limp pot. So how many aces does he have in his range? Why is he betting pot? This is a new player at the table and he's been very aggressive early on in the session. So with this polarizing bet, he's either representing a super strong hand or total air. We beat total air and we still have a straight draw. So for that reason, I make the call. Really hoping for a three, the river is the nine of diamonds. Not what we needed. I check, hoping to get to showdown, and now our opponent bets out for $110. Well, I've come this far, and I do wanna see what this guy has. It's a bit of a steep price, but I'm just a huge non-believer, and I talk myself into making the call, and he shows a six offsuit, wow. Yeah, we are just getting wrecked today. It seems like we're embracing our inner calling station because we are calling literally everything our opponents throw at us. Our stack goes back down to $280, literally right after we topped up that 200. It all went to the new guy. All right, let's bounce back with ace jack offsuit on the button. The hijack opens to $15. This is the guy who we paid off with a6 offsuit last hand. I'm thirsty for revenge. Seems like a common trend at this table. So I three bet to $45. Our opponent stands his ground and he makes the call. Heads up to the flop comes king four three, two clubs. We do have the ace of clubs. So we have some backdoor flush draws and straight possibilities. So when he checks, I see bet $35 repping a king and he makes the call. Hoping to see a club, queen, 10, jack, or ace. The turn is none of those. It's the nine of hearts. No help to us. I'll come whenever I need help, a nine comes. Anyways, our opponent checks for a second time. This time, instead of double barreling, I choose to check back, waving the white flag. The river is a harmless three of diamonds, and our opponent now bets out for $75. We just stays high once again, I make the fold, and we still can't win a pot. We're feeling pretty demoralized until we look down at the jiggities, pocket jacks in the big wine. There's two limps to me, I raise it up to $30 with my premium hand, and they both make the call. Three ways, the flop comes. Ace, queen, four, two spades. What a flop for jacks. Well, at least it's a good flop for my range, so I see bet $30. They both call, and now I'm not feeling too great anymore. One at least two limp callers must have an ace or a queen, and that means I only have two outs. So I've mentally already given up on this hand. So still three ways. The turn is the brick three of hearts. I check, and they surprisingly both check. Off to a free river is the king of hearts, putting another card over my pair. I fairly both checked the turn. I think one of them most likely has a queen and the other a flush draw because I think an ace would bet the turn. So I can probably turn my hand into a bluff. We do block jack 10 for the nuts, but honestly, I don't think it's going to get through. So I just check and they both quickly check getting the showdown. I show my jacks. The first guy shows queen 10 offsuit for a pair of queens and the other guy shows queen six of diamonds. They both had a queen and they both had a combined total of two outs and they still bink it on the flop. Jeez, it's going to be that kind of day, huh? We are starting to tilt and honestly regret not bluffing it. Our stack is down to $110. After this hand, for my own mental sanity, we change tables and try our luck somewhere else. We top up our last $300 and pray to the Lunar New Year gods that we can turn this around. I just want to get even at this point. All right, new table, new luck, fresh mindset. Let's get this comeback going. We have King-9 offsuit on the button, or as I like to call them, the K-9s. There's an early position limp, I also limp, and the blinds come along as well. Four ways to the flop comes King-10-5 rainbow. Wow, already better than the last table. We have top pair, and honestly, top pair feels like the nuts after such a terrible session so far. So when it checks to the earlier position limper, he bets pot for $25. Well, not really liking this big bet, but I'm not going anywhere. I call, and it's heads up. The turn is the queen of spades bringing in a backdoor spade draw. He fires again for $50. Pretty large sizing, so I am worried about my kicker problems, but he did limp in early position, so how many strong kings could he possibly have? I did not come here on Lunar New Year to fold, so we make the call. Hoping for a jack, because he might have pocket fives or king 10, or something like that, and the Lunar New Year gods seem to be listening because the river is the bink jack of clubs. Cha-ching, we river a straight. Thank you, lunar poker gods. 
our opponent doesn't like that river and he slows down and checks okay he definitely doesn't have an ace so we practically have the nuts with a straight i fire out for 100 dollars, hoping to get called our opponent goes into the tank he shows his king and eventually decides to call I show my king nine for a straight and he shows king seven of diamonds. Well, we had him all the way, but anyways, nice to get paid and win our first pot of the night. Holy cow, about time. What a good table change. Our stack is at $600 heading in the right direction. We still have a lot of work to do before we get back to even. Next, we have the Elsinore Aces. 6-7 offsuit on the button. On the gun one limps. On the gun two opens to $15. I call, small blind calls, and so does the limper. Four ways to the flop comes two, three, five. Two hearts and one diamond. When it checks to me, I choose to take a free river card, so I check back. Off to a free turn is the four of diamonds. Cha-ching, we hit the nut straight. The Underling Gun 2 player now bets out for $10. With two flush draws out, I raise it up to $30. A small blind cold calls the 30, and the Underling Gun 2 player comes along for an extra $20 as well. One of these guys must have the ace for the lower end of the straight, and the other one probably has a flush draw. So all we need to do is fade a heart or a diamond. Give me a black card, dealer. The river comes. The six of clubs putting a straight on the board. Well, at least it's a black card. We do have a higher straight than the board with our seven. So when it checks to me, I need to think of an amount to bet. Should I go small like $45 and get paid by both players? Medium like $80 or massive like $200 over betting the pot? I decide to bet an amount that would make it look like I'm trying to buy the pot, but in reality, I have it. So next level, reverse psychology. So because I'm super greedy and I'm in the hole, I bet out for $200 screaming, I'm trying to buy the pot please fold but on the inside i'm like please call please call please call they're both in the tank and the small blind folds ace queen of diamonds and the only gun two player folds pocket aces sheesh elsinore aces really are better than the real aces they're really in the blender, but said it was too big of a bet, so it wasn't worth to call it off for a chop. They said it was a super good bet though, because they didn't think I had it, but they didn't have the cojones to call the big bet. Ugh. I should have bet $100, but I got too greedy. I do like the bet because I know a lot of players that would snap call that bet. Too bad these weren't the ones, but we're still able to scoop in another pot, and our stack is at $680. Very next hand, we continue the heater with the Jiggities once again. We got pocket jacks on the button. There's an early position limp i raise it up to 30 dollars holds the limper who limp jams for 175 dollars he's already open jammed 200 bucks with pocket fours so he most likely has a small pocket pair again i make the call and he asks if i have a pair and i say yes and he painfully says that i got him crushed because he does in fact have a small pocket pair so that's good news for us at least the flop comes six six five well, that flop definitely fits the small pocket pair category, so I'm a bit worried now. And when the turn is the deuce, he instantly shows his pocket twos. Wow. Well, we got one chance to hit a jack, and the river is a five. Rip. Our jacks get two outed once again. Ugh. Why can't the best hand just hold up? But at least it goes to a new vlog watcher who just subscribed when he saw me vlogging today. So thanks for the support, and here's a nice welcome to the channel. There you go, buddy. Our stack takes a hit to $500. Okay, we are done with jacks. Let's go with pocket sixes and only gun two. Only gun one limps, I limp, and the hijack raises to $25. I make the call, and it's heads up to a flop of 943 rainbow. Pretty dry flop, and not a bad flop for sixes, all things considered. Of course, I would love to see a six, but eh, this flop's not too bad. I check to the razor, and he c-bets $35. A pretty large c-bet for a dry flop, but I can't fold to one bet, so I make the call. The turn is the 10 of hearts. Not the best turn, because he could be semi-bluffing with hands like jack 10 and queen 10 with two overs and a backdoor straight draw, so I choose to check it over to him once again. Our opponent fires a second barrel, but for the same amount, $35 once again. Now it's not that big of a bet, so I make the call hoping for a six on the river, and the river comes the nine of clubs, pairing the second card. Well, upside down six, but not what we were looking for. However, this card could slow our opponent down because I 
should have more nines in my range than he does. So I check, hoping he checks back. Unfortunately, he bets out for $100, leaving only $50 behind. How interesting. He now looks at the TV and tries to seem uninterested and to not give anything away. Looking at the TV after you make a river bet usually means that you're strong in my experience. I would think if he had an ace high or any pocket pair like jacks or queens, he might check back being scared of a nine. Maybe he's turning queen jack into a bluff. I'm also super curious to see what he's pretending to not be interested like by looking at the TV thing is a sign of weakness or strength. So for that reason, I make the call, see what he's got. He shows pocket tens for a full house. Okay, well, that makes sense. Ah, uh, I really need to stop paying people off. I'm literally a straight up calling station today. Holy shit. Turns out whenever a player looks at the TV after betting the river, just fold. They have the nuts. Do yourself a favor, learn from my mistakes, and just fold if you don't have the stone cold nuts like seriously you're welcome because i just paid a benji to learn this hard lesson you guys can learn it for free just by watching this video and maybe even hitting that like and subscribe button anyways our stack goes down to 275 next interesting hand we have jack 10 offsuit in the cutoff there's a 10 dollars straddle on i limp and it goes five ways to a flop of jack seven five two spades we have top pair and a backdoor straight draw. So when the big blind leads out for $25, I'm not going anywhere. I make the call and so does the button. Three ways now. The turn is the nine of hearts, giving us a gut shot straight draw. Big blind, now overbet jams for $300. This is the same player who had the king nine versus king seven and the jacks versus deuces. So he could definitely just have one pair here. However, I don't really like my kicker. So I don't want to be calling a huge overbet banking on the river for the eight or a 10. So I choose to just make a disciplined fold. The button folds his open ender and the big one said he'd show his cards if we fold. So he shows us the king jack offsuit for top pair. So we make a good fold and we save ourselves three hundred dollars. In this next hand, we have Queen 9 offsuit in the big line. There's a $10 straddle on, and there's five limps to me. I choose to complete the limp, and the straddler checks. Six ways to a flop comes King 9 6, two diamonds. On this King high board, action surprisingly checks through, and the turn brings in the Queen of Diamonds, completing the flush draw, and Jack 10 for the straight. We do have two pair, and there are three diamonds out, but I just think that somebody would have bet their flush draw or a king. So with two pair, I'm feeling pretty decent with my hand. So I choose to bet out for $35. The straddler calls and so does the hijack. Down to three players, the river comes, the eight of clubs. It doesn't really change anything because jack 10 still beats us, a flush still beats us, and uh, I still have two pair. So I'm just gonna bet and I choose to bet out for $75. The straddler tanks and then he makes the call. I show my two pair and we're good. He said he had a lower two pair for eight six. Nice to get paid by the river and our stack gets some life back up to $430. We have king eight offset on the button. It folds to us and we raise it up to $15. Small blind and big blind make the call. Three ways to a flop comes jack eight three two clubs. The small blind surprisingly donks out for $15. Usually when people donk bet they have a strong hand like top pair or a draw of some sort. So with middle pair I make the call and it's heads up. The turn is the seven of hearts. 10-9 gets there for a straight but there's still a flush draw out. The small blind continues firing for $30. I still have second pair, good kicker, so I choose to make the call. The river is the queen of hearts. He bets again, this time for $50. I would expect the jack to slow down and check after the queen comes on the river, so it makes me lean towards him having some busted clubs. So for that reason, I make the call and he shows ace jack offsuit. Oh, yeah, we are definitely just being a calling station today. Jesus Christ, we are playing terrible. Very next deal, we pick up ace jack offsuit on the cutoff. It's three limps, so I bump it up to $40. The button, only gun one, and the hijack make the call. Four ways to the flop comes King 10 9 Rainbow. When it checks to me, I have about $210 left in my stack and I'm tired of losing. So we're jamming this in and we're gonna rep strength and pray we hit a queen or an ace on later streets. So I start off with a bet for $75, setting up for a turn all in. Luckily for me, they all fold and we take it down. Let's freaking go. There we go. All we needed was some aggression. Our stack is at $390 and we're only two double ups away from profit. Next, we pick up King Jack offsuit and underling gun two. We open to $15 and it goes five ways to a flop of 
King 10 for Rainbow. Great flop for me. I feel pretty good about my hand and I see bet $20. Only the big blind thinks for a while and he eventually makes the call. Heads up now, the turn is the two of hearts, total brick. The big blind checks once more. I continue betting for $45 and now the big blind check raises to $100, basically a min click. Now I'm not feeling too great about my hand. I am very suspicious that he may have two pair or a set like pocket fours, but I can't go anywhere yet. So for 55 additional dollars, I make the call. Off to the river, which comes the 10 of diamonds pairing the second card. Now my opponent takes a look at my stack and then he puts me all in for my remaining $210. Yeah, I don't really think he's bluffing at all. I'm pretty done hero calling for the day, so I decided to make my first discipline fold, saving my last $200. Wow. Who would have knew I could find the fold button? Mona thinks I got bluffed on this hand, so let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Well, good thing we folded because the very next hand we pick up 8-6 offsuit in the big blind. There's a straddle on and it's a 5-way limp pot. The flop comes. 8-8 eight, eight, king, rainbow, cha-ching, we flop trips. I check and it checks to the aggressive player at the table who bets out for $25. I make the call and now it's heads up. The turn is the seven of diamonds. I check once more and my opponent sadly checks back. The river is the brick three. I can't risk letting it check back again. So I lead out for $65 hoping he calls with the king. But unfortunately he folds. Too bad we couldn't get another street of value, but at least we got a little rebate back. Stack is at 275. Two hands later, we look down at the ladies. Pocket Queens, our first premium hand of the night. Comeback time starts now. It folds to me and I raise it up to $30 with a straddle on. The big blind and the straddle make the call. Boy, am I ready to get my money back. Three ways to the flop comes 1055 rainbow. They both check and on this super dry paired board, I think I should check my over pair here and let them catch up a bit. Also, if they have a five, we're toast. So I think checking under reps our hand and seems like the best play. Off to a free turn, it's the menacing ace of spades. Okay, I didn't mean for them to catch up that much. The big one now donks out for $35. I tried bluff catching this guy with pocket sixes earlier and ran into his boat with pocket tens. So yeah, not trying to bluff catch again. So when the straddler folds, I just let it go and say goodbye to the ladies. I beat nothing and don't think he's donking out with a 10, especially when the ace comes. So it's either he has an ace or a five and we beat none of them. So yeah, we just fold and we lose the minimum. Let's try to avenge our queens with ace jack of spades in only gun one. We open it up to $20. The small blind and big blind make the call. Three ways, the flop comes king nine four one spade. They both check and I see bet $15 with some backdoor draws on a king high board and they surprisingly both call. Still three ways, the turn is the seven of hearts. They both check once again, so I choose to double barrel betting out for $45 hoping they fold. The small blind calls and now the big blind check jams for $110. Okay yeah, got my hand caught in the cookie jar. I make the fold and the small blind calls. The river is a board pairing nine. The big blind shows seven four of hearts for a counterfeit two pair. And the small blind shows king jack offsuit to take it down. Sheesh, this guy seriously can't lose a pot. This is the dude who I laid down my king jack offsuit to earlier on. So pretty sure he had me in that hand because he's been on an absolute heater. Our stack, unfortunately, is not on a heater. Quite the opposite, really. And it's trickling down to $160. We're now in tournament mode with about 30 big blinds. So the very next hand, we pick up Ace Queen of Hearts and we jam it all in and we take down $40 worth of dead money. I guess that's one way to chip up. I'll take it. Our stack is at $200. Next, we have King Jack offsuit once again in the hijack. We open at $20, the cutoff calls, and now the small blind three bets to $60. I'm not in the folding mood again, so I make the call and the cutoff calls as well. Three ways, the flop comes. Queen nine eight, all spades. We have the jack of spades, so we have a gutter to the 10 of spades for a straight flush. Not a bad flop. I think I'm going with this one. The small blind surprisingly checks and I seize the opportunity and I I jam it all in for $170, hoping to take it down right now. The cutoff folds, nice. One down, one more to go. But the small blind calls. We're heads up to a run out, 
praying for a spade or a 10. The turn comes, the king of clubs giving us top pair. Okay, not bad. And the river comes, the 10 of diamonds. Cha-ching, we river our straight. I show king jack for a straight and he shows jack 10 for a flopped straight. Sheesh, we got lucky. We were able to chop it. If only a spade came, we would have scooped this pot and would have been right back in it. However, I can't complain about a chop after he flopped a straight and we got it in super bad. Stack is at $230. We go all in a couple more times with king queen offsuit and pocket fives and we take down some dead money and we cut our losses and rack it up. Better luck next time. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of me playing like a total moron. I was literally paying every player off that bet at me and yeah. I have no idea what got into me that day. Uh, it was Lunar New Year and me and Mona were trying to test our luck and we both unfortunately lost. We were in for $1,000 out for $260 for a loss of 740 bucks. Yeah, losses stink, but you know what? It's all worth it because we just hit 1K subs. Yep, a new milestone accomplished on this poker vlogging journey. I right, thank you guys all for the support and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.